What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Now, some of you may already know, but I'm a software engineer that works full time from home. So I spend like 25 hours a day up in my office at my computer. And if I'm not working, I'm working on YouTube videos for you guys. And so I've done several things to try to make this office more comfortable for me so that I can spend more time in it. I've got a comfy chair, a TV, giant monitors, a sit stand desk, and I've even got my own air conditioning unit. But there's still one thing that's missing from my setup. And that's that I've been using the speakers from my MacBook Pro, which are fine, but they're certainly not good enough for a setup like this. So today, I'm gonna to be upgrading those speakers from something like this. To this. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, like I already mentioned, I've been working full time from home for a while now, and this whole time I've been using the built-in speakers from my MacBook Pro. That setup was working fine for me. I mean, I could hear my coworkers well enough during meetings, and if I needed to, I could always use my headphones. But after seeing a video by Scuba Moto where he made some flat panel speakers, I was inspired to try and make some of my own. The original idea came from a tech ingredients video where he walked through how flat panels or DML speakers actually work and how to get the best sound out of them. So if you wanna learn more about how these speakers actually work, make sure to check out the two videos linked in the description below. In short, DML or distributed mode loudspeakers work by using small electroacoustic exciters to induce vibrations in a panel, hence the name flat panel speakers. DML speakers are popular because if built correctly, they have a great frequency range, they can radiate sound in both directions, and oftentimes the material they're made out of act as a sound absorber, so they actually improve the acoustics of the environment they're in. On top of that, and the main reason that I decided to make my own, is the low cost of the materials. As far as downsides, these speakers often have trouble producing lower frequencies, so you'll often see them paired with a subwoofer to help boost those lower frequencies. But since these speakers are cheap to make, you should have a little extra cash to spend on a nice subwoofer. Now, if everything I just said didn't make a lot of sense to you, then don't worry because it didn't make a lot of sense to me either before I started this project. So don't be afraid to try and make these yourself. Anyways, with all that boring stuff out of the way, let's get started putting these things together. Now, I was actually able to find everything I needed for these speakers aside from the exciters themselves at Lowe's. So I knocked out most of this parts list in one shopping trip. I also decided to cover my speakers in fabric instead of spray paint, so I did have to make an extra trip to a craft store to pick some black fabric up. For the main body of the speakers, I used one inch thick polystyrene foam insulation board that comes in a convenient two foot by two foot panel. I also picked up some cotter pins and picture frame wire to hang the speakers, as well as some speaker wire. I ended up ordering the exciters themselves from Amazon after Parts Express kept pushing the restock date back. So. These exciters aren't the ones I actually wanted, but they should be good enough for now. According to Tech Ingredients, in order to produce the best sound from these foam panels, you need to round out the corners, sand off the outer surface of the foam, and suspend the panels with as few points of contact as possible. So to do that, I rounded the corners using a super high-tech process of tracing a bucket of drywall compound I used in my last video with a Sharpie, which I then cut with a razor blade. Next, I took some 220 grit sandpaper to the surface of the panel to remove the hard outer layer, as well as hit the edges and corners to clean them up a bit. I might have saved some time by using a random orbit sander on this step, but the foam is pretty easy to sand, so you do run the risk of taking off too much material with a powered sander. With that done, I marked off the locations for the mounting holes as well as the locations for the exciters. The top holes are seven inches from the top and six inches from either side, while the bottom holes are centered and offset from the bottom by two inches and 10 inches. For one of the panels, the exciter is mounted directly in the center, while the other should be mounted at the two fifths and three fifths of the panel's width and height. For me, this came out to be about 9.6 inches from the left and top of the panel. 
I don't fully understand the science behind the placement of this exciter, but it sounds like it helps with frequency coverage when the speakers are used as a stereo pair. To drill the holes for the mounting pins, I used a quarter inch drill bit and some painter's tape to go about half an inch deep. It was actually kind of hard to keep the bit from wandering since the foam is pretty soft, but as long as you're careful and you go slowly, it shouldn't be too difficult to get all the holes drilled. Once the holes are drilled, I used hot glue and a special jig I made from foam scraps to secure the mounting pins at a consistent height. Now, that should be all you need to do to make these speakers functional, but since I'm mounting them in my office, I wanted to make them look a little bit better than just plain foam panels. So to do that, I used some black fabric and some fabric adhesive I picked up at a craft store and stretched the fabric onto the panels. The corners proved to be a little difficult and I probably could have saved myself some headache by using staples, but I wanted to try the glue first in case I didn't like the finished result. In the end, the corners have some visible folds, but since they're pretty consistent across all the corners, I actually like the finished look a lot, so I decided to keep it. If you want to save some effort, you can actually spray paint these panels as long as you keep the can over 40 centimeters or about 15 inches away from the surface. According to Tech Ingredients again, the xylene and acetone that dissolve the foam will actually evaporate in that distance, so it'll take a while and probably a whole can of spray paint just for these two panels, but it will result in a nice uniform flat look if that's what you want to go for. Once the fabric was attached, I mounted the exciters to the pre-marked spots using the adhesive on the front of the exciter, and I soldered some speaker wire to the terminals to act as a sort of strain relief for the exciter. To actually mount the panels on the wall, I designed and 3D printed two different kinds of hooks. The top hook has two different contact points to keep the panel from swinging or twisting as it vibrates, and the bottom hook just acts as a third point of contact to keep the panel parallel with the wall. The bottom hooks also have a channel that I can pass the speaker wire through. I ended up deciding to bend the cotter pins as well to keep the panel even closer to the wall while leaving enough space for the exciter to not hit the wall. I also found that after some testing, the picture frame wire created a buzzing noise against the 3D printed parts at certain frequencies, so I decided to swap it out for some thread and found that this completely fixed the buzzing. With that, I can officially call this project complete. I don't have a very high quality microphone, so it might be hard to tell how good these things actually sound, but I can assure you it's pretty damn good for $35 per speaker. Like I mentioned before, they don't do a great job on the lower frequencies, so I'll probably need to pick up a subwoofer eventually, but they are by far an upgrade from my built-in MacBook Pro speakers. To power these things, I'm just using a cheap pile receiver that I have connected to my computer, as well as my little office TV. So now when I continuously watch and re-watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it'll sound great. Anyways, that is it for this video. I wanted to give a huge shout out to Tech Ingredients as well as Scubamoto for inspiring me to attempt this project. So make sure to check out their videos if you have any other questions on how to make DML speakers. I'll also have all the parts and a write-up for this project in the description if you're interested in trying it yourself. This is my first dive into speaker technology, so if you have any suggestions or improvements to be made, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.